mind you have and join me for a walk towards the cooling tower near uh, Chernobyl reactors 5 and 6. Uh, let's first look at the map where those things are located. This would be the abandoned town of Pripyat. Next to it the main area with the reactor that blew up. The large cooling pond. The area of reactor 5 and 6 with the cooling tower. And yes, this is where we are going, the cooling tower. And so we walk past the usual scrap that is everywhere in the zone. Through some tiny woods. And finally onto the open plain. Everything around here is quite hot, as you can see it's very close to reactor 4 that blew up. Just entirely above the floor, as hot as the, the crane that we measured where we found oh, these wow. hot spots. But now here is everything. Five impulses per second, three microsieverts per hour. After the explosion, so because uh, like that's a that's a uh, cooling thing for, from reactor five and six. So it's just a couple hundred meters walk to the actual uh, reactor four. I'm using an energy compensated Automass 86 device, currently with alpha beta probe in beta only mode. That is with a protective cover. Several counts per second. So more and more and more. The people you could just see on video belonged to my first 2D exclusion zone of Chernobyl with Bionaut 23 tour, and they agreed to cover my cost in return for receiving professional measuring equipment and professional info during the entire trip. And uh, again, thanks folks for covering the cost. I know you will watch this video, so again, thank you very much. Anyway, let's walk on to the cooling tower. Switching over to the other camera. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, that hole indicates that a lot of people went through there before. Okay, we'll just this one. Okay. Oh, let's go. Somebody sounds literally sick of walking there. I just break that off. Get me kaputt before it's wegbrechen. Yeah, another obstacle. Time to put the camera away, so I have at least one hand for climbing. The dam detector always gets in the way during climbing. We'll see that more often in my future videos. Oh, careful, not bad. Yeah, try not, try not to stop on that, but just the concrete. Everybody made it, so I'm moving right along. And seeing this collapsed piece of a crane here. But nothing radioactive, so moving right along until we encounter some train tracks, which proved to be a beautiful sight. It was a perfect summer day each day. Really awesome. Still, these are good photos for Flickr, but not so good for video, so let's proceed. <laughs> With hot spot, a hot spot, randomly. There are a lot of fuel fragments scattered all around this area. So that's probably what this is as well. But I just look for it for a short amount of time. Look at that. Look at that. No, no. But after a little while, I gave up. I saw many of these small fuel fragments and I found something much, much better on this trip. So I uh, didn't really bother too much with this little piece. If there was nothing to find, all right, well, move on. And Gamma Scout says... Uh, I have to wait a little, but... Um, 
Yeah, 30. 30 microfield. It's not too bad. Not much at all, actually. So let's rather move on to the cooling tower, which we can see in the distance there. And finally, we're stepping out of this little wood and onto concrete. As so we're just near the finished cooling tower. There's a second cooling tower, which is unfinished, which is pretty much just the base. But this is the finished cooling tower of reactor 5 and 6. Quite impressive old building with a rusted ladder you could use to climb up. But I didn't do that. Right in front of the cooling tower there was yet another hotspot. But it seemed to originate from a larger stone that was buried underneath there upon closer investigation. But as I didn't find anything too interesting, I decided to again move along and into the cooling tower. This was absolutely wonderful on a hot summer day like this. It provided some wonderful shade and it was still quite windy due to the open bottom here. There was some moss all over the place, which, as usual, takes up the radionuclides. Well, it is contaminated, but I don't know about much. I mean, we're <laughs> just our guide is just walking without putting anything above his shoes, so yeah. just do it like him. <laughs> and you'll be fine. No, 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 that way. Yeah, yeah. No, the no. inside of the tower was also beautiful for playing with echoes. Good for concerts. Echo. Echo. <laughs> Quite a nice place with the echoes, the shade and the everlasting fast clicks of the AutoMass external probe. Besides the usual contamination of the moss on the ground, I also found something interesting. Bones. I think those were probably horse bones, but I didn't find a head, so can't tell for sure. Definitely a large vertebrae. I wonder how they got here. Maybe a wolf that killed one of these wild horses of the zone, dragged it here and was feeding on it. Due to the high background it's not that easy to get a reading from the bones, even with open alpha shield. But uh, you do get a reading when you're measuring them in uh, lower background environments. As uh, bones are rich in calcium, which is chemically similar to strontium, so you will get low level especially beta readings from these, as strontium is an almost pure beta emitter. Strontium-90 that is, which is a fission isotope. More echoes. And some folks in our group decided to climb around. Well, seemed rather safe, at least uh, nobody fell off. So, as we had seen the tower, we decided to walk on towards the reactors 5 and 6, which uh, we will climb onto in the next